Hello and welcome to the fifth video in the Baselight workflow series. Today we're going to be focusing on keyframing and some of the tips and tricks around the interface. Just quickly before we start, just want to give a big shout out to my first Patreon. Really appreciate that support. Let's jump into the video. So uh, to get started, I have my shot selected here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a transform operator. Cool. So you can see down the bottom of our parameters view, we have a keyframe bar and you can see that we can scrub from the first frame to the last frame. Okay, so if I wanted to add a keyframe to this clip, say I wanted to add a dynamic zoom, I would park my cursor at the first frame of this clip. I'm gonna go up to my image transformation settings. Now, any parameter that can be keyframed uh, will have a set key icon and a keyframe mode icon. So if I wanted to adjust my scale from one to 1.5, I would hit the set key button and you can see that all of my keyframes are enabled. You can tell this because the set key icon is now blue. And also you can see we have a little glowing notch on the keyframe bar. So you can see that notch here. At the moment, I'm gonna leave it on a one scale. Now I'm gonna drag my cursor to the end of my clip and I'm gonna add another keyframe. I'm gonna change my scale to 1.5. You can see the scale has been added to my last frame and if I drag my cursor back, you can see that it is slowly scaling in to that point. If we have a look at the keyframe mode button and we click this here, you can see that it's currently on an S curve interpolation. That might be okay. Um, I tend to prefer all of my keyframes to be in linear. I can change the keyframe mode of my scale to linear. My scale parameters have changed. If I wanted to change the keyframe mode for all of my parameters, I can shift click I can select all of the keyframe modes at once. I'm going to go ahead and select all linear. And you can see that all of my keyframe modes have changed at once. Okay, so what happens if I wanted the scaling to finish in the middle of the shot instead of at the end? There's a couple of ways that we could do it. So the first way is we could bring our cursor to our keyframe. You can see the set key button is blue and I've got a glow around my notch, which shows I can edit this keyframe and I could copy the parameters. To do that, it's Command Shift C. You can see that a little yellow box flashed around my transform settings. So this means it's copied to the clipboard. And I could drag my cursor to where I want the zoom to finish, and I could Command V to copy. So now you can see that my scale goes from one to 1.5, and then obviously nothing happens here because these two keyframes are the same. If I wanted to delete this keyframe, I could just hit the set key button again and you can see that that has been removed. So that's one way I could do it. If I command Z those actions. Another way I could do it is I could move the keyframes. If I wanted to move this keyframe, I would need to drag my cursor until it's glowing and I can right click and I will add this to move selection. Now you can see a little arrow has just appeared. So now that I've added it to my move selection, I can hit the command button and the square bracket left button. And you can see when I press command and left square bracket, I can move it to the left. If I wanted to move it to the right, the right square bracket. And then I could move it into my desired position and then release the command button. Right click on the keyframe and reset all move selections. And now I have successfully moved my scale keyframe from the end into the middle. Okay, so that's another way. If you wanna delete your keyframes, I'm gonna shift click on my keyframe mode button and change them all to constant, which will remove all of my keyframes. So there's two more things we're gonna look at. So I'll just quickly command Z that until we have our dynamic zoom applied. There are three toggleable options here on the keyframe bar sub panel. Starting off with this show all, this is your keyframe filtering. So if we jump along to a graded clip, click into our keyframe filters, you can see that we have all of these keyframeable parameters. I could filter just by my contrast keyframes or just by my saturation keyframes. And in that way, the keyframe bar would become a lot cleaner if you've got lots of keyframes going on. If we go back to our transform strip, uh, you can see that we have an auto edit and a stripe KFs, which I assume is stripe keyframes. If we go ahead and we create just another keyframe here. So um, you can see that when we rest on a keyframe, the notch glows, which means that we can edit this keyframe because the cursor is resting on it. But if we drag it into the middle here, 
and we change this auto edit mode to edit left, the notch to the left of my cursor is now glowing. If I change this to the right, now the notch to the right of my cursor is now glowing. This means that any adjustments that I do will be editing the keyframe to my right or left respectively. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to auto edit. And the last thing is the stripe keyframes button. When I have this toggled on, when I create any keyframe, it'll create a keyframe for all parameters that can be keyframed. If I command Z that, if I turn this off, it will just keyframe the specific parameter that I selected. Okay, so I always just have this on. I most of the time keyframe multiple parameters at once, so I don't mind this functionality, but if it bothers you, you can turn this off. And very quickly to end, this is a really cool tip that um, I learned a couple months ago, which is really useful, especially when you are tracking shapes. Um, if you want to adjust all of your keyframes in tangent, what I want to do is I want to go up to the edit menu, go down to the grouped grading tab, and you have to make sure that grouped grade all keyframes is selected. With that ticked, I can hit Command G, which is my group grading mode. And you can see my one strip is now flashing. If I go ahead and adjust my Y position to whatever I want it to, so say 958.2, and if I hit Command G to get out of group grading mode, you can see that because I was in that group grading mode, if I scrub along to my cursor, you can see that all keyframes have changed to 958.2 on the Y axis. So if you ever want to do those types of adjustments across the board, make sure that your grouped grading all keyframes is enabled. And that's it. That's the advanced keyframing tutorial. I hope you uh, came away with some new tips and tricks from that. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.